One really neat feature of Docker Compose that we haven't talked about yet is that we can actually use variables inside of this. And this lets you adjust configuration per environment. And the first thing I'll show you, first example I'll show you, is one way that you can run multiple Docker Compose environments at the same time. Now, the reason why you might not be able to do that out of the box is if you try to bind to port 80 on your Macintosh and port forward that into port 80 inside of your container. You can only bind one port at a time generally on your networks and the way this works. So if you try to bind two Docker Compose environments to port 80, you'll get an error on the second one you start up because the first one will have already bound to the port you configure here, port 80 in this case. So we can actually make this a variable that we can set separately per environment. So the syntax for that is the dollar sign, brackets, and then the variable name. In this case, I'll use app port, so for the application port. So let's save that and let's see, docker compose ps. One small issue with that is that now that I've run docker compose commands against this, this sees that the app port variable is not set and gives us a warning. It's not an error, it's just a warning, but we can just say app port equals 80 and then run docker compose ps. And that's kind of a quick way to get this to have that port and know it exists. So I have some stuff running, I'm gonna run down and now nothing's running. And then I just want to reiterate what we saw here. I set app port equals 80, and then I ran docker compose down. So app port becomes the environment variable that the docker compose file is reading, right? It's looking for environment variables. So that means I could have also done export app port equals 80, and then I could have done docker compose ps or up or down or whatever, just as long as app port exists for docker compose and me exporting it up here makes it available. Now, one thing that I think is a little nicer is that docker compose will automatically look for a file named .env. So if you are a Laravel developer, that's kind of nice because it's already there out of the box. However, in my case, it's not there, right? It's in my application directory and I can move all the docker stuff into the application directory, which is something I actually do a lot. But just for the sake of the series, I'm going to make a different environment environment file and that'll be just for Docker Compose. It won't be shared with Laravel. So I'll set my app port to 80 here inside of the .m file and then we can do Docker Compose PS and we can see that it read that .m file automatically. And actually to prove that to you, I'll start a new shell in here after I update OA, oh my ZSH. And we have a new shell here. So um, let's see, echo app port won't say anything, right? Because it's not set here. And I'll do docker compose ps, and we still will not receive the error because it read that environment variable from the .env file that is in this directory. Okay, so that's really nice because you can set your .env file separately per environment, right? So if you're sharing this with developers and other developers don't have port 80 available, they can change that in their .env file and not have to worry about that change. The change will just get sucked into Docker Compose automatically. So you can use these for quite a few things and I actually use it a lot in the side of other projects of mine. For now, I'm just gonna also bind a port for my database. And I'm only gonna do that because I wanna be able to connect to my database over um, SQL Pro, over a client. So 3306 is the port that MySQL uses inside of the container. And on my computer here for the port to forward into that, I'm just gonna set that to a variable DB port. And then if we edit the .m file, and actually I can do that inside of my code editor here. So DB port equals 33060. So I'm gonna add a zero at the end of that, just so you can see that it doesn't have to be a standard port. It could be any port I want. So 33060. So we'll save that. Let's do docker compose up D. So it spins this up and we'll see how this works. Um, let's go to SQL Pro. And I actually already have a Docker local one that I have set up here that I use for all my Docker containers. It's using the root uh, username. It's using a password of secret, which I believe is what we set this latest database one to. Uh, host is 127.001, right? And I'm using port 33060 in this case. And that is gonna be port forwarded into the container to port 3306, where MySQL is listening for connections. And it worked. So there's really nothing else to do there. I'm already connected. We can see my users um, and my migrations and all that good stuff. I'm into the database in my container that's running MySQL. It's really that easy. And the only change there we had to do is to set a port for the database container here so that some port in my Macintosh gets forwarded into port 306 inside of the container. And whatever port that we wanna do can just be set in our .m file here as a variable for our Docker Compose file to use. So this is really neat if you're running multiple apps inside of Docker Compose at the same time, or if you just want to give this to other developers to use, and if they have conflicts, they can define what ports they wanna share. And you can do other stuff also, like um, what directory you uh, want to set as a bound volume and all that good stuff.